In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. As we begin the celebration of the Eucharist this afternoon, we come before the Lord asking for forgiveness for our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who bestow light on all the nations, grant to our peoples the gladness of lasting peace, and pour into our hearts that brilliant light by which you purified the minds of our fathers in faith. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first letter of John. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also must love one another. No one has ever seen God, yet if we love one another, God remains in us and his love is brought to perfection in us. This is how we know that we remain in him and he in us that he has given us of his spirit. Moreover, we have seen and testify that the Father sent his Son as Savior of the world. Whoever acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God remains in him and he in God. We have come to know and to believe in the love God has for us. God is love. And whoever remains in love remains in God, and God in him. In this is love brought to perfection among us, that we have confidence on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. And so, one who fears is not yet perfect in love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. O God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. The kings of Tarshish and the isles shall offer gifts. The kings of Arabia and Seba shall bring tribute. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. For he shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor. The lives of the poor he shall save. Lord, every nation on earth will adore him. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory to you, O Christ, proclaim to the Gentiles. Glory to you, O Christ, believed throughout the world. Alleluia, alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. 
After the 5,000 had eaten and were satisfied, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and proceed him to the other side toward Bethsaida, while he dismissed the crowd. And when he had taken leave of them, he went off to the mountain to pray. When it was evening, the boat was far out on the sea, and he was alone on the shore. Then he saw that they were tossed, and while rowing, for wind, for the wind was against them. About the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them walking on the sea. He meant to pass by them, but when he saw them walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost, and they cried out. They had all seen him and were terrified. But at once he spoke with them, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. He got into the boat, and with them the wind died down. They were completely astounded. They had not understood the incident of the loaves. On the contrary, their hearts were hardened. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I think a huge part of our life of faith is how God's grace continues to develop our sense of expectations. And that's a good thing because I think when we talk about the life of faith and we talk about the greatness of who Jesus is, second person of the Trinity, incarnation, this, just this revelation, divine truth in our salvation, that we got to grow. We got to grow an understanding of who Jesus is and how we experience who Jesus is. And that means growth means our expectations change. And usually it means that our expectations in the fashion as we get to know someone um, and as we get to know Jesus, that our expectations should broaden and deepen in God. What the disciples have problems with him today, it's interesting to hear that they just celebrated, they fed 5,000 with 12 loaves of bread and five fishes, or five, 12 loaves, yeah, and five fishes. And they, this extraordinary miracle, and then they go off on the sea and they're, they're caught in the storm and they, they see him walking on the water. They're afraid, they're terrified, and in, interesting enough that, on the contrary, that they don't see this as a necessary divine act, that their hearts are hardened now toward our Lord. It's almost like there's this, after experiencing such extraordinary things in the multiplication of the loaves and then Jesus calming the storm, walking on the water, that there's kind of this kind of withdrawal of saying, you know, we don't, we don't know. I mean, should we trust this guy? And the important thing is to point out that they probably had really high expectations after seeing the multiplication of the loaves, after hearing him preach. They probably had, probably in their minds, what they thought a good idea of who Jesus was. And then there's this contrary experience of a storm that's raging, that they're struggling against, and they see him walking on the sea. There's this further revelation of something much broader and larger about Jesus that they don't understand. And so they're probably, just as the first reading indicated, they're probably afraid. They're probably scared. And they're not sure what to make of him. And so there's kind of this hardening of hearts, like, whoa, you know, I'm not sure how wholeheartedly I can go into this myself because something really huge has been revealed here. It's important for us that, you know, God does that. That's how he works our, our conversion is he continues to adjust our expectations. And he does that through combinations of what we just experienced in the gospel today and yesterday through these wonderful blessings that we see as a blessing coming from him that we recognize extraordinary and life-giving and, and everything. And then there's other things that are scary. There's other things that are challenging. There's other things that, that suffering's involved. And sometimes very, um, not, some really bad things can happen. Circumstances, really difficult circumstances people can face. And yet, God uses that existence of our lives to, to broaden, if we're faithful, to broaden our expectations and understanding of what divine salvation really is. You know, how good is divine salvation? How good is eternal life? How good is it to be in the beatific vision? You know, there are all these things that we have all these words to describe, and the saints have many things to say about these things, but it's kind of so good that words can't even describe. And so one of the ways, the dynamic that we just saw in yesterday's gospel and we see today is this way in which Jesus is really working with his followers, especially with his, his disciples, the apostles, to broaden and deepen their expectations of God. And sometimes that, that means that there's, things are scary. It means embracing the cross. It means that it's not always, not always great. 
And these are really good words for us to hear at the beginning of the year, kind of thinking a kind of model of the year. Yeah, we expect this year there's going to be blessings. There's going to be, there's going to be challenges. There's going to be suffering. There's going to be the cross sometimes and all. But God is using these things not as kind of like a... He's using life and human existence and the realities of it, including evil and badness, to... Um, he's using all of it to help, help grow our faith and to help grow our, our, our knowledge and understanding of who he is. And... What a, um, appropriate readings for us to have as we begin a new year and we begin to think about what this upcoming year is going to look like. We have a lot of hopes in this year being different from last year. But nonetheless, this example of, of this miracle and then another miracle, him walking on the waters and calming the wind, is another miracle of sorts, but it's a way that's not, I mean, the, the, his followers right now are really troubled by that. And only later will they come to understand uh, it's deeper meaning. It's more full meaning. So we avail ourselves to the Lord, rem you know, reminding ourselves that this, this year, there's going to be a lot in store for us this year. And there's going to be a lot of, um, there's good things and blessings that we need to recognize and acknowledge. And then there's other stuff too that um, kind of, we're kind of in that boat, you know, and Jesus is showing up and it seems kind of, it's kind of scary, uncertain. We don't know what's going to happen. But there is a, it, in that circumstance, there's an invitation for us to more deeply entrust ourselves over to his mercy, over to his love, over to his grace. So let us offer our prayers to the Lord. Gracious God, today we pray for Pope Francis. We pray for his ministries as the vicar of Christ here on earth, for uh, the graces and gifts of the Holy Spirit to be with him in his life of faith and service. For Pope Francis, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray today for our nation, the needs of our country, and the needs of its people. We pray for all those who hold public office, and we pray for all those who have been entrusted with the responsibility of care for the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray today for all families, especially those with young children, that for their particular needs this day, especially in the areas of wisdom and strength and patience and understanding and charity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Father Arthur Rohrraff, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, through the intercession of all the angels and saints, we ask that you hear the prayers we offer today and that you grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer to you, fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer to you, fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may faithfully be united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, 
you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Andrew, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those who would like to receive the Eucharist on the hand, we invite to come forward first in our communion line. For those who would like to receive on the tongue, we ask that you wait for all those who have, for all of those to receive the Eucharist on the hand after they have received. Um, and thank you again for being mindful of your social distancing. prayer for spiritual communion for those at home. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. May your people, O Lord, whom you guide and sustain in many ways, experience both now and in the future the remedies which you bestow, that with the needed solace of things that pass away, they may strive with ever deepened trust for things eternal, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.